let's get started. How many of you think you could name each of the days of the 12 days of Christmas? Okay, not very many. I see a few hands. Okay, let's just start with the first one. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Okay, all right. That's, that's pretty good. Well, most, most Americans at least know the song. And this song is, is printed uh, inside your book. But today, the song is mostly used to measure inflation. Yeah, no joke. Every year they come out with what's called a Christmas index for inflation. Now, thanks to Bidenomics, if you were to purchase everything in the 12 days of Christmas, it would cost you $202,000. Yeah, that's up over 75% from 1980. That just kind of shows you the value of the dollar. Um, what happened to the 12 days of Christmas? With inflation and supply shortages, I could only get you a partridge in a pear tree without the partridge. <laughs> inflation is eating our pocketbooks. Well, today I'm going to tell you the story behind the song. And Rochelle will dialogue a little bit. Come on over here. Um, the, in fact, Chris and Joseph are unbelievable tech guys. Uh, the people watching online, they're switching back and forth between the screen, so we're not blocking their view. Um, in the 13th century, there was a poem that was written that was discovered fairly recently, uh, within the last couple of hundred years, at Cambridge University. The name of the poem was The Twelfth Day. And the words of that poem were a reflection of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Over time, the poem was translated into multiple languages. And though we don't know where or when the actual song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, originated in terms of music, we do know that for several hundred years, the words of The Twelve Days of Christmas were used by parents and grandparents to teach their children the Christmas message, the story of the gospel. Now this became very important when governments began to outlaw Protestant or Evangelical Christianity. Uh, for example, uh, if you are a nonconformist like um, John Bunyan, uh, you couldn't get a job in England because you were not part of the Church of England. Little known fact Baptists are nonconformists, and the first foreign missionary in the world to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to other nations was a young man who was a Baptist in London, England. The Baptist Missionary Society was started because William Carey felt the call to take the good news to India. But the only thing Baptists could do to make a living was open alehouses. So all of the alehouses and the sale of tobacco uh, was done through the early English Baptists, which really is surprising when you look at what's happened today in terms of cultural traditions of American Baptists. But having said that, uh, Rochelle, we, when we wrote this book, your desire for its design was not so much for a kid's book, though kids could enjoy it, Tell them what you thought about the design itself. Well, I, I wasn't looking for a traditional design, so to speak. I was looking for a more contemporary design. Um, but when Alice came to us and her style was more traditional, then um, that kind of became what we yeah. did. I wanted it to be something eye-catching for today's generation, and that's why I was thinking a little bit more of a uh, current um, artistic approach, but, um, but I love the traditional as well. So, and, and so many things were going back to traditional. Yeah. So that's... Yeah, and, and we kind of compromised because Rochelle said, okay, we'll do the interior, 
traditionally, but the cover will be more modern. And so one of the things, one of the greatest compliments we had was when we picked the books up, uh, there was someone who had no knowledge of the book. They had no idea, in fact it was at the post office, that it was a Christmas book. So the desire was to lay it on the coffee table. And frankly, if you want to leave it there year round, people will be surprised when they open it up and they see it's the message of Christmas. So it was a combination of both. So let's get started. The theme of the 12 days of Christmas is the gospel of Jesus Christ. My true love is God the Father. He is the subject of the 12 days. You are the object. My true love gave to me. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. So in the 12 days of Christmas, we see revealed a loving Creator through giving His Son to us. So let's start. The first day of Christmas. My true love gives to me a partridge in a pear tree. During the Middle Ages, a partridge was the symbol of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. A partridge is known for its willingness to lay down its life for its young. In fact, you, you can have horticulturists who will tell you that a partridge easily will defend its young by stepping in front of a predator and giving its life for the sake of its children. So too, the Lord Jesus Christ gave His life for us. But why is it a pear tree? When Jesus, the partridge, giving His life for us, died, He died on a tree. But a pear tree is a symbol of sorrow. In fact, if you look at a pear, it's in the form of a human tear. When Jesus Christ died, it is the Father who gave His Son. There was sorrow in the heart of the Father. But the pear is also sweet. Because when He shall see the travail of His soul, He shall be satisfied. In other words, even though the giving of the Messiah at Christmas caused sorrow in the heart of the Father, He saw that sorrow and was satisfied in the gift of His Son, because His Son saves us. Yes. Make sense? Any comments, Rochelle? You feel free to jump in. By the way, my mom is a professional editor, and she made me feel really good. Uh, mom, uh, you worked for several companies. She became chief, would fly to Boston, and so on. But what was the last company you worked for? Yeah. So, I mean, she knows her stuff. Uh, my mistake was not giving this to my mom to professionally read through. But she made me feel good. Rochelle and I, we really worked hard to make sure it was perfect. And we saw a couple of mistakes. The first person that sees one will get a free book. Okay? <laughs> I called my mom and she said to me, there is never a perfect book. And there's really not. And the truth of the matter is, it kind of keeps the authors humble. So we, we like the way it ended up, but if you see a mistake, understand that uh, it's something that we could not avoid. The second day, my true love gives to me two turtle doves. Now what's interesting about the two turtle doves is, during the Middle Ages, when parents would teach their kids about the Scripture, they would teach them about the Old Testament and the New Testament. And the love of the Father revealed in both. But why is it two turtle doves, which represent the Hebrew Scriptures and the Greek Scriptures? Well, the two turtle doves represents God's mercy for the poor. You read the book of Exodus and Leviticus and Deuteronomy, you will see that when the Hebrew people went to Jerusalem to offer their sacrifices to Yahweh, the poor could bring two turtle doves. In addition, when Jesus was dedicated uh, by His parents, they brought two turtle doves in offering their firstborn son to Yahweh. So here in the second day, 
we see the two turtle doves represent God's mercy. And I know some of you are looking through this as Rochelle and I walk you through it, but there are some summary statements in each page. Uh, in fact, Rochelle, tell them when you were reading it out loud as we were driving down to Oklahoma City, what was your thoughts as you, as you read it, as you read each chapter? Well, I think the message is fresh no matter, matter how many times you read it. And it, again, encouraged me personally and made me so grateful for my creator who loves me, has pursued me, and provides uh, for my continual transformation um, as we go through the journey. Yeah. In fact, um, here on this second day, Rochelle was saying, you know, I like this so much. I want to give this to my staff for Christmas. And because the gospel is so clear. And see, here's the thing. Rochelle's a professional. She works with professional staff. And it's all about abilities. It's, it's all about uh, what you do. And, and in their mind, they think that God only accepts people who measure up. And so they stay away from God because they don't feel like they ever measure up. Well, here on this second day, notice the last three lines. The turtle doves are a picture of our poverty before God. We have nothing to offer Him. Salvation is always based on His mercy, never our abilities. He who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, how will He not also, along with Him, graciously give us all things? Romans 8, 32. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gives to me three French hens. Contrary to... The two turtle doves, French hens, during the Middle Ages were very expensive. Only the wealthy had them. But notice the subject of, my, of this book, my true love, gives to me three turtle, or excuse me, three French hens. I bring two turtle doves because I'm poor. For an offering, he gives me three French hens. Hens. What are these three French hens that are expensive? Well, when parents would teach their kids this song, they would say, it is faith, hope, and love. And this is what your true love gives to you. To you. Faith in God, hope by Him, and love from Him. And so you can read uh, through this particular stanza and see how the gospel was portrayed by parents to their children. On the fourth day, my true love gives to me four calling birds. He gives to me a future. Parents would teach their kids this fourth stanza and say the four calling birds are the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Calling birds were very common birds during the Middle Ages. And these calling birds had a very distinctive call. That's why they would be called calling birds. So too Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were common people. They were fishermen. Probably the lowest rung of occupation. But yet they had a distinctive call. And so we say as we outline this stanza... When the call of the gospel of Jesus Christ comes, it matters not from whom it comes. It may be an evangelist that your grandmother, your father, your mother. It may be a friend at work and you may see their imperfections in life. But remember, the gospel is a treasure that comes from God and is pronounced and called for by evangelists. God exalts the humble. He brings down the proud. Boast about your true love who brought you to the good news through a calling bird in your life. So, the four calling birds represent the four Gospels. Rochelle, any word? All right, fifth day. God gives me wisdom. These are the five golden rings. Parents would teach their children these five golden rings. The Pentateuch is what the Hebrews call it. The Pentagon is the five-sided building. The five books of the law are the five books of wisdom. The five golden rings. By the way, Torah in Hebrew, 
We just finished writing an eight-volume commentary on Isaiah from the original Hebrew, Dr. Darnell and myself. The word Torah means instruction. And so parents would take their kids and sing this song to them. And when they'd come to the fifth day, of the five golden rings, they would take them to Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy and say, here is wisdom, here is instruction, and then they would show them Christ. And of course, you remember, when Jesus walked on the road to Emmaus, He opened up Moses and the prophets and showed the two that He walked with everything about Himself. Listen, if you don't see Jesus in every page of the five books of the law, then you've missed the wisdom of the five golden rings of the twelve days of Christmas. On the sixth day, my true love gives to me new life. These are six geese allaying. Now, rather than going through in detail this sixth day, let me just summarize it for you. Parents would teach their kids, these are the six days of creation. And in the same manner your true love created the universe, so too will He create a new you. He will dispel darkness and bring you light. He will separate what is evil and bring you good. He will produce within you fruit as He did on the earth. And so they would teach their children about the six geese laying as an act of God's creation, both in the universe and in our hearts. And that's the sixth stanza. On the seventh day, my true love gave to me seven swans a swimming. This represents the fruit of the spirit that is within you. In fact, we'll come to the actual fruit of the spirit on day nine. Here, it's the seven characteristics of the Holy Spirit. And there's a very subtle difference. And you may have never noticed this before. On the seventh day, uh, in Revelation chapter 4, the Bible says there are seven spirits before the throne of God. Now that doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit is seven entities. The number seven speaks of completeness or divine perfection. There are seven characteristics of the Holy Spirit. That's why the seven spirits are around the throne of God in Revelation 4. What are these seven characteristics of the Spirit? They're found in Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, strength, knowledge, piety, and the fear of God. Meaning reverence for God. And so parents would sing seven swans a-swimming, and then they would say the seven characteristics of the Holy Spirit, which is a gift to you, are the characteristics of the Spirit of God around the throne. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, strength, knowledge, piety, and fear. And let me tell you, when you teach kids what these words mean, and you tell them your true love will give these things to you, it's got the possibility to change their lives. Now, I really love the eighth day. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something about, you know, when you sing this song and, and you go, On the eighth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me eight maids a-milking. I mean, nobody's got a clue what that means. Eight maids a-milking. Well, parents uh, would, their kids in the Middle Ages, they'd understand because all kids milked. That was what the kids did. They milked. But here's what's fascinating. Um, have you ever had a phrase used in your presence before that goes something like this? Her skin is as smooth as a what? Milkmaid. What does that mean? Well, when you milk cows, you get cowpox. Cowpox does not affect human beings, but it gives them an antidote internally for human smallpox. So kids in Middle Ages who milked cows would grow up with smooth skin because they didn't have the scars of human smallpox. They had the antidote. So what parents would teach their kids is this. When you become a follower of Jesus Christ, and you recognize the true meaning of Christmas. On the eighth day of Christmas, you will come to an understanding that your true love gives 
to you the eight Beatitudes of the New Testament. Attitudes that will make you smooth in a world that is rough. Blessed are the poor in spirit. You, you read those eight. By the way, I'm going to give it to you so I don't have to give away uh, a free book. Here's the most egregious error. We don't know what happened. We don't know where it got lost in translation. But there are eight Beatitudes, not seven. Okay, so here's the deal. The first one, poor in spirit, is missing. And so I tell people when they see that error... He kept the authors poor in spirit. <laughs> there you go. So when you get there and you read it and they say, But Grandma, I only see seven. Where are the eight? You say, Well, the author said the first one, poor in spirit, was left off. And it has kept him poor in spirit. <laughs> On the ninth day, God gives to me the fruit of the Spirit. By the way, the fruit of the Spirit, nine, got these right. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things. There is no law. Have you ever noticed that it is never the fruits of the Spirit? It is always the fruit of the Spirit. The fact of the matter is, when you begin to understand the grace of God and the giving of His Son, and you come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, He gives to you. Nine ladies dancing. You see, the evidence of the Spirit of God within you is the fruit of the Spirit. And you can't say, well, you know, I've, I've, I don't have peaceableness uh, because I get angry. But I've got the others. No, you can't separate them. There is no excuse. And so you teach your children, the nine ladies dancing, are the, they represent the joy of the attitude of those who come to faith in Jesus Christ. Do you, do you see how the gospel is shared? On the tenth day, God gives me instruction. Ten lords are leaping. Lords are men with authority. In the Middle Ages, a lord was one who controlled the estate or the manor. What are the lords, the ten lords are leaping? Well, they're the Ten Commandments. They're not ten suggestions. These are the ten commandments. And by the way, our founding fathers really didn't want to call them the ten commandments. So they changed it to natural law and the laws of nature. Because in the laws of nature and natural law, you see the ten commandments, which are commandments for every nation under the sun. And so, how sad is it that we do not teach our children the instruction that comes from God. The ten lords are leaping. Have no other gods before me. Do not steal. Does that make sense? And can you imagine how if a teacher could take this song and teach it in our public schools? The difference that it would make? The eleventh day, God gave me mentors. These are eleven pipers piping. These are the 11 faithful apostles. And parents would use this to teach kids about 12 apostles. But then they would take Judas off. And they would say, listen, understand that there will be people who will say they follow Jesus Christ, but they're like Judas. They want the money. They, 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 they want reputation and power. Be the 11 pipers that are piping. This is what your true love will do for you. And, and so here, um, the 11 faithful, by the way, most of them had rough beginnings. They also struggled along the way like Judas. But yet, every single one of them returned to Christ. And so what we do when we take our grandkids through this, we, we tell them about Peter who denied Christ. And, and so on. But in the end, when he was crucified, tradition says, he said to his tormentors, please, do not crucify me. As my master was crucified, I am not worthy. Crucify me upside down. And so Peter goes from a man who denies Christ in the court of Caiaphas, in the courtyard of the high priest, to a man who is crucified upside down in courage, refusing to deny Christ. How is that? Well, because his true love had given to him 11 pipers piping 
a sense that all of your life is intended to serve your Creator. And finally, the twelve drummers drumming. This is the Apostles' Creed. If you ever hear a little drummer boy, the beat of the drum, the beat of the drum. The Apostles' Creed was written for early Christians. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. I believe He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. I believe He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, I believe He rose again. I believe He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. He will come again, I believe, to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. This is the Apostles' Creed. And so parents would teach their kids that the twelve drummers drumming are the Apostles' Creed. And the children would memorize it. So, in closing, God's love is revealed in the 12 days of Christmas. And if you take a look, if your book is open, at the very end, as people go through this, there's an invitation for those who are poor in spirit, who understand they have nothing to offer God, to come to Jesus Christ to fulfill the true meaning of Christmas. And so, because you've heard this, I don't think you'll ever listen to this song again without thinking of the gospel, the true meaning behind the song. Rochelle, before we go, I want to say a few things about Oak Pack Foundation. Any closing words you want to say? How about the book table? Well, our hope is that you will be able to use this as a devotional uh, with your family, um, for yourself, um, not just at Christmas, but throughout the year to remind uh, you and others uh, that you love of who we follow and who we trust. Uh, we have books available. I know everybody that, that came today received a book. If you would like more for gifts or for whatever, um, if you buy four, um, you get one free. And by the way, so. the four are at a discount price. Online, they're $30. Today, it's $25 if you purchase an additional book, and we don't get any royalties, mm -hmm. all the money goes to our nonprofit uh, ministry. But if you buy four today, mm -hmm. you get the fifth one free. Mm -hmm. So we've already had a couple who've bought five for $100. And like I said, there, you won't get a tax deduction for it because you're getting something in return, mm -hmm. but you will be supporting our nonprofit ministry. And then also, there's a card for our website. Yeah. We have an information card, um, how you can find Wade online, uh, his writings, um, our resources, books, stuff like that. So there's a, a card for you to take as well. Yeah, and I, I just want to say thank you to, to Rochelle. I am trying, um, by God's grace, I, I don't do as well when she's not working with me in Astoria. Uh, so I'm trying to get her to be full time uh, with us with me. I'm the only person at Astoria. Uh, but man, there's so much we want to do. So much for the kingdom. And if the Lord grants that, uh, that would be Aya sooner rather than later. But, uh, you know, we may take that step, but it's a step of faith. Uh, so you've been a big part of it. So thank you. Today, let me say something about Oak Pack. On your table, you've got a month to think about it. The reason I wanted to, get, Rochelle and I, wanted to give you these books for your $5 admission fee, it's really twofold. We wanted to see who was sneaking in without paying the admission fee, and uh, just, by the way, that $5 just basically pays for the room. We are a 501c3 nonprofit foundation. I believe in Oak Pack Foundation so much we wanted to contribute this to OPAC Foundation and then encourage you. We want you to think about, for the next 40 days, what you might could give to OPAC Foundation as your year-end gift. You will receive a tax deduction. Our board is phenomenal. We have the best speakers in the world. And, and so um, my challenge to you is to take that card, and let, let's, say, let's say you get an inheritance, 
Or let's say that something happens in terms of your stocks and your broker says, look, you don't want to take it. Uh, you want to give some of it for tax reasons. I want you to think of Oak Pack Foundation first. And even a story of ministries second. Because we did this for Oak Pack Foundation. Bob, I know we've got a preview. We've got about five minutes, four or five. Any questions that you might have about the book or anything else? Yes, ma'am. Is, is it on Amazon? Can you it on Amazon? That is a tremendous question. And the answer is no. And I'll tell you why. All my other books are on Amazon. And Amazon, their cut is ungodly. And taxes, we're a nonprofit, so we don't pay taxes. I have a hard time with them on that issue. Does that make sense? And, and, and so Rochelle said to me, she said, Wade, there's no way we can sell 4,000 books ourselves. We've got to go on Amazon. And, you know, she's smart. But we made the decision. We made the decision. Even if we have to go two years, we're going to hold these over for next year. Because they, they'll take 35, 40%. And I want that to go to the kingdom. Make sense? Great question. But our website is easy to navigate. So you can, on that card that says Astoria, you can either scan the code or you can go to AstoriaMinistries.com. And we do Stripe. And we also do stacks. It's all secure. And you can buy one book. We'll ship it to you. Two books, three books, up to four. Uh, but that's it. Any other questions before we go? Thank you for that. Hey, let me ask you. Did you learn something today? Yeah. yeah. All right.